Omagyanatmarandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militangena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayeva Japati Tanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we're reading chapter number six, 62, entitled Usha Meets Aniruddha in the Krishna book. So we were hearing about Banasura, who was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And Banasura was the son of Maharaj Bali, who was a great devotee also. Maharaj, Maharaj Bali had surrendered everything to Lord Vishnu. But Bana, Bana, his son Bana, became a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And he was very powerful. Bana was very powerful. He had a thousand arms and he would he, he would smash the mountains with his arms. And he, he was always looking for somebody who could give him a good fight. But it, nobody was ever equal to him. He was so powerful. He was so strong. So he, he heard that there was actually, he said that in the future you will find somebody who can be more powerful than you, that there's actually Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead, and he's more powerful than you, and he will defeat you in battle. So Banasura was a perfect example of a foolish demon who used his energy for sense gratification and not for Krishna's service. And he wanted to use his, his strength to fight people, but he couldn't find anybody strong enough. But in contrast, we can see devotees like Arjuna. Arjuna was also very powerful and great fighter, and he used strength to fight for Krishna. So Banasura had a very beautiful daughter whose name was Usha. And when she, she had come to the age of marriage and she was sleeping with, with many of her girlfriends and one night she had a dream about a young man. So in her dream she dreamt that there was this young man by her side and that he was enjoying uh, a conjugal relationship with her. But 
Usha had never actually seen or even heard of this man before. And so when she woke up from her dream, she said, in, she said out loud, Oh, my dear beloved, where are you? So the other girls who were sleeping with her, they all woke up and they were surprised to hear her talk like this. And she was, she was a little bit embarrassed and a little bit ashamed to talk like this in front of the other girls because none of them were married. So Usha had a girlfriend there whose name was Chitraleka. And Chitraleka was the daughter of one of Banasura's ministers. Actually, she was the daughter of the Prime Minister. So Chitraleka and Usha were very, very close friends. So Chitraleka said to her, he said to, she, she said to Usha, she said that, you know, you are not yet married to any young man. So you have not even seen any boys until now. So I'm surprised that you're talking about men like this. So who is this man who is uh, who who you like so much and who uh, who is he? he he must be very suitable for you so Usha told her, she said, well, in my dream, I saw this very handsome young man and his complexion was very, very, very nice and his eyes were just like lotus petals and he was dressed in yellow cloth. And he had long arms and his his general bodily features were so attractive that any young girl, young woman would be attracted. And Usha told the other girl, Chitraleka, she told her, she said, I, I, I'm proud to say that this young man was kissing me and I was very much enjoying the taste, the nectar of his kissing. But, but I'm sorry to say that he disappeared and I have uh, now I'm, 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 I'm disappointed because he's, I don't know where he's gone. So she, she said to her friend, she said, I'm very worried, I'm very anxious to find this wonderful young man. And 
So Chitraleka said to her, Oh, I can understand your problem. And I can tell you that if this boy is here in the three worlds, either in the upper, the middle or the lower planets, then I will find him for you. You have to pick him out from your dream. You have to identify him from your dream. Tell me what he looks like and I will bring him to you. So she said, let me draw some pictures for you and you can pick out which picture is actually him. And she said, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where he is. I know how to go there and bring him here. So you just have to identify him from my drawings and then I will go and get him and bring him here. So then Chitraleka began to draw pictures of many different demigods in the higher planets. And she drew pictures of Gandharvas and Siddhas and Charanas, Panagas, Daityas, Vidyadharas, Yakshas, many different, uh, many, and as well as many different pictures of human beings. Siddha, Sharana, Pat, Naga, Daitya, Vidara, Laga, Yaksha, Rom, Thakpanot, Ikmakma. So from the Vedas we know that there are living entities of different varieties on every different planet. Jasima Bhagatam Laga Vandakam Pravedinina, Lao Pisut, Dai, Va, Mi, Sing, Mi, Shivitna, Nai, Dao, Kho, Yu, Ye, Ye, Makmai. It's only foolish to think that life is only on the earth planet. Life is everywhere. So Chitraleka painted many pictures. And among the pictures, there were pictures of the different kings from the Vrishni dynasty, including Vasudev, the father of Krishna. And she drew pictures of Krishna's grandfather, Surasena. And pictures of Balaram and Lord Krishna and many others. And then she drew a picture of Prajumna, who is the eldest son of Krishna. So when Usha saw the picture of Prajumna, she became a little embarrassed, she became a little red in her face. And when she saw the picture of Aniruddha, then she became so embarrassed and so shy and so red in her face that she bowed her head and smiled and she admitted that this was the man she had seen in her dreams. And 
นางก็ก้มหัวลงแทบแดงพนางก็ยิ้มแล้วนางก็บอกว่าคนนี้แหละชายที่นางกําลังค้นหา So she showed this picture to Chitraleka, and she told Chitraleka that this is the man who has stolen her heart. So this girl Chitraleka was not an ordinary girl, but she was actually a yogini, and she had mystic powers. So when Chitraleka, when Usha identified the picture, then Chitraleka understood that oh, this is the picture of Aniruddha, the grandson of Krishna. But actually, neither Chitraleka. Nor Usha had ever seen Aniruddha in real life before. And they didn't even know his name before. But that very night, the same night, Chitraleka travelled in outer space, and in a very short time. She came to the city of Dwarka. So the city of Dwarka was well protected by Lord Krishna, but somehow c h i t r a l e k a was able to enter the palace. And not only did she enter the palace, but she went into the room where Aniruddha was sleeping in a bedroom. And c h i t r a l e k a by her mystic power, she was able to bring Aniruddha while he was still sleeping. She brought him back to the city of Banasura, where Usha was waiting. So Usha was waiting patiently, waiting to see her desired husband. And when when c h i t r a l e k a brought Aniruddha there, then Usha was very happy, and she enjoyed the company of Aniruddha with great satisfaction. So Usha was this, the daughter of Banasura, and Banasura was a powerful king. So he had his daughter protected in a very special place in the palace where no man could go. Not only could men not go there, they couldn't even see who was inside. And so Usha and Aniruddha they lived together there in the palace. Nobody knew. And day after day they were together, and Usha's love for Aniruddha grew four times upon four. In other words, it grew more and more every day. And Usha gave pleasure to Aniruddha by giving him nice, valuable clothes, garments to wear, and flowers, and garlands, and scents, and incense. 
ล้วอุชาเนี่ยก็เอาใจในรูปแบบโดยการถวายอาภรณ์เสื้อผ้าดอกไม้พวงมาลัยน้ำของทุกต่างๆ And by his, by the bedside, they had nice sitting places, and there was nice, uh, comfortable arrangement for living there. And there were all kinds of nice, refreshing drinks like sherbet and milk, and nice eatable food which could be chewed or swallowed. แล้วก็เครื่องดื่มดีๆอย่างเช่นนมหรือว่าชูเบอร์แล้วก็มีอาหารที่ดีให้เคี้ยวหรือว่าให้กลืน And Usha was very expert in pleasing Aniruddha. She pleased him with her sweet words and by giving him very nice service. แล้วก็อุชาเนี่ยก็ให้ความประทับใจกับสามีโดยการใช้คำพูดที่ไพเราะ And Usha actually worshipped Aniruddha just like he was the supreme personality of Godhead. And by her service, Usha made Aniruddha forget all the other things. Only thing Aniruddha could think about was this woman, this girl Usha, who was with him, and so he developed a lot of love for her. Aniruddha ก็คิดถึงไม่ได้แล้วนอกจากอุชาผู้หญิงที่อยู่ตอนนั้นค่ะ So Aniruddha, he actually he was with Usha so much that he for, he forgot himself, and he could not remember how many days he had been away from his real home. So, in course of time, because they were staying together with each other for some time, then Usha began to show some bodily symptoms, by which she could understand that she was having some intercourse with a man. อุชาก็แสดงลักษณะอาการทางร่างกายที่ทำให้เข้าใจได้ว่านางได้มีเพศสัมพันธ์กับกับผู้ชายคนนี้แล้ว And the, these signs, these symptoms were so clear that her actions couldn't they couldn't hide it from anyone. And everyone who saw Usha, they could understand that oh, this girl is having a, a having a relationship with a man. But Usha herself, she was always happy in the company of Aniruddha. And there was no limit to her satisfaction. But there were people around the palace. There was people like the housekeeper and the guards of the palace, and they could un they could understand what was going on. They could see when they saw Usha. They understood she must be having a relationship with a man. So they all went to the master, her father, Banasura, and they told him. So in the Vedic culture, for a girl who is not married to have association with a man is very disgraceful to the family. ตามหลักของตามวัฒนธรรมประเวทแล้วเนี่ยหญิงสาวที่ยังไม่สมรสมาอยู่ใกล้ชิดกับผู้ชายเนี่ยเป็นเรื่องเสื่อมเสียของวงตระกูลเป็นอย่างยิ่ง So the people who were taking care of that part of the building where the the girls were staying, they told Banasura what was happening that Usha 
is must be having an affair with a man. And the, the, the servants also told Banasura, they said that we have been very careful in guarding the house, that no men have gone in there. We have been very careful. We don't let any young men get anywhere near there. So they were so careful that a, a man could not even see what was going on there. So they were the people who were taking care, they were just surprised that Usha had become so contaminated. So that's why they came to tell Banasura, who was the father of Usha to tell him about the situation. So when Banasura heard, then he was very shocked because he, he, he was shocked to hear that his daughter Usha could no longer be a virgin girl. So this this was a, a heavy weight on his heart. So he rushed, he went rushing to the place where Usha was living. And when he entered in there, then he saw Usha sitting with Aniruddha together, and they were sitting, talking together, and they looked very beautiful together. So Aniruddha's father was Prajumna, and Prajumna was Cupid, so Aniruddha was very very attractive, very good looking, handsome. And Usha was also a very beautiful young girl. So when Banasura saw his daughter with Aniruddha, he could see that they were a good match for each other. But still, Banasura was not happy about the combination at all because he was thinking about the name of the family. And Banasura, he couldn't understand who this boy was. He could understand that Usha could not that she that she had selected a very a very good looking young man. Hmm, because he was so attractive, his 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 uh, lotus eyes and his long arms and his nice curling hair. And his, he had a beautiful smile and his lips were certainly very, very attractive, very captivating. But Banasura did not care about all of this. He was very angry. And 
and he saw this Aniruddha, he was in playing with his daughter Usha. So Banasur was very angry. Anasura had been, he was dressed very nicely and Usha had put a beautiful flower garland around him. And the reddish kumkum powder, which is on the breasts of women, was also on the garland of Aniruddha. This, so this showed that Usha and Aniruddha, they had been embracing each other. So Banasura came in there, he was just surprised that Aniruddha didn't even care about Banasura. He was just sitting peacefully in front of Usha. But Aniruddha could also understand that this man, who was going to be his father-in-law, was not, was not happy with him. And he called many soldiers in the palace to attack Aniruddha. So Aniruddha didn't have any weapon with him because he had been brought there in the night by Chitra Ketu. So he didn't bring any weapons with him. So he just took hold of a big iron rod. And Aniruddha, he, he knows how to fight. And so when he, when he saw the soldiers coming, he got ready to fight all the soldiers. So Banasura came with all his soldiers and he saw Aniruddha was standing before them just like death personified. So, so Banasura ordered all the soldiers, he ordered all of the soldiers attack him, arrest him. So when they came before Aniruddha, Aniruddha hit them with a rod and he broke their heads and their legs and their arms. One after another, they all fell to the ground. So Aniruddha was killing all these soldiers, just like, just like if, there's a, if there's a pack of boars and they have to fight with dogs, the, the, the leading boar will, can kill all the, can kill dogs, barking dogs, one after another. So Aniruddha was a, a great fighter and he beat so many of these soldiers and killed them, he was able to escape from the palace. But Banasura was also very expert in fighting and he had the blessings of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva had given, given him the use of a special weapon which is called the Nagapasha, which is a snake rope. So Banasura released that Nagapasha against Aniruddha 
and it tied up Aniruddha, it took Aniruddha a prisoner. So then Usha got the news that Aniruddha had been arrested by, his, by her father, so she was very sad. So she was crying, tears were falling down her face, and she was unable to check herself. She was crying very loudly. So that how that's how the sixty second chapter ends. So then the chapter goes on, chapter 63, we hear about how Lord Krishna fights with Banasura. So the four months of the rainy season passed and Aniruddha still had not come home. So all the members of the Yadu family became very worried what could have happened to him. So then one day the great sage Narada Muni came and he told them about what happened to Aniruddha. And he told them how Aniruddha had been taken out of the palace in the night by the magic powers of Chitralika. And she had carried him to Sonitapur, which was the place where Banasura lived. And Banasura had arrested Aniruddha with his snake rope. Even though Aniruddha had defeated all the soldiers, he got defeated by this snake rope of Banasura. So Narada Muni told the whole story to Lord Krishna. So all the members of the Yadu dynasty, they love Lord Krishna very much. And so when they heard what had happened to Lord Krishna's grandson, then they all wanted to attack the place of Banasura. And all the leaders of the family, they, they all came to fight. Can, can we mute there, Archana? Yes, Gurmash. Uh, I think. Yeah. So, uh, all the leaders of the family were people like Prajumna and Sadyaki, Gada, Samba, Sharana, Nanda, Upananda, Bhadra. They all came together with the armies, 18 Akshahini armies. So they all went to attack the city of Banasura and they came with their soldiers and the elephants and the horses and chariots. So 
So Banasura heard how the soldiers of the Yadu dynasty were coming to attack his city and they were tearing down all the walls and the gates and the gardens. So Banasura became very angry. So Banasura ordered all of his soldiers that they should go out and fight the Yadu dynasty. And Lord Shiva is so kind to Banasura that he came as the commander and chief of the army of Banasura to fight against Lord Krishna. And he came with his sons, Kartikeya and Ganesh or Ganapati. So Lord Shiva was seated on his favorite bull. His favorite bull was called Nandeshwara. And he had, Lord Shiva led the fight against Lord Krishna and Balaram. So Lord Shiva with his sons on one side and on the other side was Lord Krishna with all of his sons and his brother, elder brother Balaram and so many other devotees. So people who saw the battle, they were all shocked with wonder and the hairs on their body stood up. And Lord Shiva, he was fighting with Lord Krishna. And Prajumna, he was fighting with Kartikeya. And Lord Balaram, he was in he was fighting with Banasura's commander in chief, who was called Kumban Kumbanda. Uh, and Kumbanda was assisted by somebody called Kupakarn. Yeah, Kumbanda, yeah. Uh, Kupakarn yeah. And Samba, who is the son of Krishna, he fought with the son of Banasura. Yeah, Samba, yeah. And Banasura, he fought Satyaki, the commander-in-chief of the Yadu dynasty. So it was a big fight. And news of the fight, it spread all over the universe. And all the demigods, they all came to see. Even demigods like Lord Brahma from the highest planet in the universe, he came to see. And then there were also people from Siddhas and the Charanas and the Gandharvas. They all wanted, they were all curious to see the fight between Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna and all of their assistants. They wanted to see how everyone is fighting. So these people from the higher planets, they came in their aeroplanes, so they were all in the sky and they were watching from above. And Lord Shiva, 
has another name. He's known as Bhutanath because he's helped by different kinds of powerful ghosts. Lord Shiva, he's, he gets help from different, from different ghosts and other places, people like the Bhutas and the Pretas and the Pramatas, the Guyakas, Dakinis, Pishachas, Kushmandas, Vetalas and Vinayaks and Brahmarakshasas, all these different people, they're all different kinds of ghosts mm -hmm. and some of them are very powerful. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Brahma Rakshasas are very powerful. They were actually Brahmanas in their previous life and now they have become ghosts. So they're powerful people. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, he drove all these ghosts away from the battlefield, just simply by the arrows from his bow. Lord Krishna has a very special bow called the Sharanga and he uses that bow and he was using that bow in the battle and it got rid of all the ghosts. So then Lord Shiva tried to release his different weapons against Krishna. But whatever weapon Lord Shiva would release, Lord Krishna would counteract it with a different weapon. For example, he counteracted the Brahmastra weapon with another Brahmastra. Then, then Lord Shiva released an air weapon and Krishna created a mountain weapon to counteract the air weapon. And then Lord Shiva, he, he created, he used a weapon to bring about a hurricane on the battlefield. So then Lord Krishna just simply brought a mountain and with the mountain then the hurricane was stopped. And then Shiva produced a weapon which caused a lot of heavy rain to fall. Oh no, Shiva, he, Shiva released a weapon of fire, it was burning everything and Krishna released a weapon of rain. Hmm. And so the rain put out the fire. Uh, All right, we'll stop here tonight. Are there any questions?
યુવતી સાચી માંગે છે ગૌરવ કરી Hare Krishna, I am Guru Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my humble businesses. Oh, Guru Shushila Pakupat. Uh, Guru Maharaj, why did uh, Chitralekha uh, bring uh, Usha to Anirudha and uh, she uh, didn't bring Anirudha to Usha because I thought, uh, according to Vedic standards, the bride uh, should come into the group's house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why is it so, Guru Maharaj? I guess she thought it would be more fun to bring him there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Because Aniruddha already has, he already has another wife there in Dwarka, so she brought him away <laughs> from the other wife. Ah, uh, so, yes. Because, you know, they had, he'd already married some other girl or there was already... He was, you know, young kings, the Kshatriyas, they have many wives, just like Krishna had many wives. So his children, Prajumna and Aniruddha, Arjuna, they all have several wives. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So Chitraleka brought... she brought Aniruddha there. <laughs> And he could, he could have more enjoyment without disturbance. If she had brought Usha to Dwarka, no, no, everybody, you know, oh, they, who is this and what she do, you know, it would, wouldn't have been quite the same. Yes, but it's an interesting question, I think. Why, why did she so? Yes, well. Like I said, you know, he has his family, has his wife, she wants to she get him away from all these people, then they can enjoy better being on their own. No, yes, yes. So that he gets more enjoyment, they could enjoy each other's company more. If she had brought Usha to Dwarka, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to enjoy each other quite the same. Right? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I think so. Thank you so much for your explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question, Archana? Yes, I have a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances, uh, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, is this uh, Lord uh, Shiva's desire to make this fight? Because uh, previously he gave a blessing to Banasura that uh, he will one day face a fight with the uh, Supreme person. Yes, Lord. Well, Lord, Sh I don't. You know, Lord Shiva. He he's obliged to fight on behalf of, on the side of Banasura because Banasura had been given a blessing by Lord Shiva, and he asked Lord Shiva. He said, "I just want you to stay here and protect me, and if any trouble comes to my palace, my kingdom." And you should be here to protect me and to help me fight against the enemy. And so Lord Shiva was there. When Lord Krishna came with the army, then Lord Shiva had to come and fight. And he brought his sons also to fight. And because Bana is his devotee, so Lord Shiva is obliged to his devotee. So he's fighting on behalf of his devotee. Yeah, he is good, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And why the Brahmanas become Brahma Rakshasas? It's a bit... Uh... Well, sometimes Brahmanas also do sinful things. Sometimes they get intoxicated and get drunk and things like that. Although they're Brahmanas, sometimes they even commit suicide. Or sometimes they're, you know, they die in inauspicious ways. And they become ghosts. Of course, they're not. They're not very pure brahmanas. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sometimes the brahmanas they do Vedic sacrifices. They do things to harm people and to kill things. You know, so they get a lot of karma. Sometimes they're very materialistic as well. They're very attached. 
sometimes, so sometimes they become ghosts. And sometimes they're even lusty after other people's wives and things. So they get these kind of reactions. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is not a pun. It appears like they will become ghosts and they will trouble more. Doesn't seem, it seems to be a punishment to other people. <laughs> like that. No, you know, if we know there's ghosts here, we just keep away from them, right? Yeah, yes. And generally, if the ghosts are there, we can just, the ghosts, there's certain things the ghosts don't like. They don't like the chanting of the holy name. They don't like the sound of the conch shell. You know, there are many things which ghosts they don't like. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, yes. It's very difficult. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Bhatma Mataji has a question. Oh, yes. Yes, what's the question? Yes, part of the question you have already answered, Gurudev, uh, about these Brahmanas. But the Brahmanas were really pious learned those days, unlike the Brahmanas nowadays. Yes. Brahmanas nowadays are not so learned, right? But in the past also, not all brahmanas were learned. Some brahmanas were learned, not all. Remember, oh. these, these brahmanas, they're just brahmanas by birth. They don't always have a lot of education. They don't always study the scriptures. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes and sometimes, although they may claim that they're brahmanas by birth, you, you have people like Ravan and Haranyakashipu, they were born in Brahmana families, so they were very demoniac. Oh. Hmm? Yes, yes, now I understood what they mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much, Archana, for your translation. Thank you, Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbaka Vrinda Ki Jai. 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 Jai.